okay i will start my class now uh, i think nobody else will join very poor attendance but let's uh, start so before i start th there is a video i would like to show you people taxonomy it's the science of classifying living things. That sounds exciting. Today, we'll basically be learning the Dewey Decimal System of Evolution. It's like filing. You must be on the edge of your seat. Okay, shut up. When it comes down to it, this science doesn't just categorize organisms. When you look a little deeper, you realize it's telling the story of all life on Earth, and it's a pretty good story. <laughs> Every living thing on this planet is related to every other living thing. If you go far enough back, we all have a common ancestor. An organism that both you and I are descended from, or something that a starfish and a blue whale are both descended from, or even weirder, that an oak tree and a salmon are both descended from. That organism lived. It lived very long ago, but it was here. And I dig that. The trick of taxonomy is basically figuring out where all those branches of the evolutionary tree are and finding some convenient labels to help us understand all of these remarkable interrelationships. Let's be clear though, taxonomy isn't about describing life in all of its ridiculous detail. It's mostly about helping humans understand it because it's way too complicated without structure. To get that structure, biologists use the taxonomic system to classify all the organisms on the earth it's sometimes called the phylogenetic tree, or the tree of life, and it illustrates the evolutionary relationships between all living species. So there are about two million known species, but there could be anywhere from five million to a hundred million species. Scientists really have no freaking idea. New species keep getting discovered all the time, and the more organisms we have to keep track of, the more complex the phylogenetic tree becomes. So there's not always a consensus about how to classify this stuff. There's a lot of gray area in the natural world. Actually, let me rephrase that. The natural world is one giant gray area. Sometimes it's just hard to know where to put a certain group of organisms, and eventually the group gets so big the classification system has to be messed with to make room for it. So the system isn't perfect, but it's good enough that we've been using it for around 250 years. <laughs> What's that? Do you smell a biography coming on? Carl Linnaeus was a Swede, born in 1707, and early in his career as a botanist, he realized that the botanical nomenclature of 18th century Europe was, well, just crap. For instance, in his day, the formal name of a tomato plant was Solanum caule enorme herbaceo folis pinatis in cissus technologies like genetic testing to classify relationships between organisms, and yet, we still use Linnaeus's morphology-based system because genetic evidence generally agrees with classifications that are made based on structure and form. However, because there was a lot of life that Linnaeus had no idea about, we had to stick a new taxa above Linnaeus's kingdom. We call it domain, and it's as broad as you can get. The domains are bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. The bacteria and the archaea are prokaryotes, meaning that their genetic material goes commando, with no nucleus to enclose it, while the eukarya make up all of the life forms with a nucleus and include pretty much all of the life that you think of as learned something. Thanks to everybody who helped put this episode together. If you have any questions for us, please leave them on Facebook or Twitter in the comments below, and we will get to them hopefully very quickly. Uh, we'll see you next time. So uh, there was a sort of uh, interruption in the video because my g network went off. Let's see if I could uh, resume uh, this uh, once more.
ओके द स्ट्रीम हैज कम बैक सो आई हैव गॉट वन मोर वीडियो फॉर यू पीपल टू सी बिफोर वी गो हैड विद द क्लास A drone fly. Buzzing from flower to flower, this little insect is a honeybee mimic, pretending to be harmful when it's not. This particular species is known by its binomial name, Aristarlus tenax. But what does this mean? What's a binomial name? All will be revealed. In this episode, we'll be exploring biological classification. Biological classification is a form of scientific taxonomy. As we've learnt in Phil's Insect Orders episode, taxonomy is simply a way of putting things into categories. Biological classification is how scientists categorize all living things, from bison to bacteria. The man who came up with it all was Carl Linnaeus who came up with a system of categorizing the natural world based on shared characteristics. Most importantly, he came up with something called the Latin binomial system, a two-worded system used today to give a unique scientific name to every known species. We'll come back to that in a little bit. His ranking system was much improved by Charles Darwin's principle of common descent and the onset of modern cladistics. Instead of organisms being grouped purely on shared characteristics, they were now grouped according to evolutionary relatedness, using evidence from multiple fields. So what are the ranks that Linnaeus came up with? Well, let's go back to our drone fly. We'll start with the species, Aristarlus tenax. This is the Latin binomial name and is unique to this species. Tenax is a species name, given to only that specific type of drone fly. Aristarlus is the name of the genus. There are nine other species of drone fly in Britain that share this genus, all of which are closely related. All members of this genus are found in the family Cervidae, the hoverflies. Hoverflies belong to the order Diptera, the true flies. Flies are insects, and insects are part of the phylum Arthropoda, animals with an external skeleton, segmented body, and appendages, like crustaceans, arachnids, and centipedes. Ultimately, the drone fly is part of the animal kingdom, and is a eukaryote, an organism whose cells contain a nucleus. So these are the general taxonomic ranks. You can remember them using this helpful mnemonic. Do koalas prefer chocolate or fruit, generally speaking? But sometimes extra ranks are needed to classify a distinctive group within a taxa, making things a teeny tiny bit more complicated. In the case of the drone fly, all British Aristalis species and another 18 British drone fly species fall into the tribe Aristalini. The hoverfly family in Britain contains another 11 tribes. Okay, let's look at a more familiar example. A fellow mammal, the jaguar. Its Latin binomial name is Panthera onca. The genus Panthera is shared by other big cats, like the lion, leopard and tiger. Big cats are part of the cat family, Felidae. And Felidae is part of the order Carnivora which includes creatures like dogs, seals, and bears. Carnivora is a mammalian order, and mammals are part of the order Chordata. Other Chordata classes include our feathered backbone relatives, the birds, and the aquatic jawless fish. Again, we can add intermediate ranks. In the case of the jaguar, we get subspecies. Jaguar populations differ morphologically and genetically because of isolation 
and their subsequent adaptations. Jaguars have eight recognized subspecies. So why not just call it a jaguar? Well, jaguar is its common name, but common names can differ from country to country or even within regions within a country. For example, this plant is called cleavers, sticky bud, or even goosegrass, depending on what part of the UK you're from. Sometimes two different species can share the same common name. In Europe, Arithicus rebecula is called the robin. In North America, Turdus migratorius is also called the robin. The Latin binomial name makes things far less confusing. It's unique to the species and is the same in every country and every language. It's universal. But remember, the Latin binomial name is not just a label. It also implies biological relationships, specifically evolutionary ones. So hopefully that shed a bit more light on how biologists categorize life. We've got specific videos on orders and families and if you want to see those, click here. In the meantime, catch you later. So, uh, with this let me start my uh, talk. Which is the basics of animal classification. So what do you mean by classification? Classification is the process by which scientists group living organism or animals. So biology, living organism, zoology, animals. Uh, I'll interrupt and ask you that if there is any problems, kindly raise your hands. I will uh, intermittently look into uh, the raise hand section and then I will ask you uh, the question, whatever questions you have. Please feel free to raise your hands. Okay. Organisms are classified based on how similar they are or how different they are. So ordering of animals into groups or sets on the basis of their relationship is known as zoological classification so ordered grouping of organism according to their similarities and consistencies with their inferred descent is called biological classification this is the definition by Mayer and Ashlock basically biological classification means you are grouping similar organisms or living beings together and keeping different ones separate. So this follows a set of rules, a set of nomenclatures, a set of uh, uh, principles. That means, jara akrakum dekhte, tadher ke ek jagay rakha hoche, jara alada tadher ke alada kora hoche. Ei ei alada kora ba ek shonge rakhar, jara rules gulor hoche, jara principles gulor hoche, taaki bola hoche biological classification. So, organisms are classified according to a system of seven ranks, predominantly seven ranks. They are kingdom, phylum, uh, class, order, family, genus, species. So, for example, let us look at the honeybee. The name is Apis mellifera. This is the uh, binomial nomenclature by Carlos Linnaeus, like you seen in the video. So, it belongs to the kingdom Animalia, it is the phylum Arthropoda, it is the class Insecta, order Hymenoptera, family Apidae, genus Apis and species Apis mellifera. There are other species like spe uh, Apis indica and uh, the several other species. So, let us look at that of the dog. Always remember that whenever you write by hand, Say for example, Canis familiaris. C A N I Canis Femi Liaris. you must always underline them. Ken is familiar. If you don't underline them, 
it will be crossed over as incorrect you will get zero marks so let us look the uh, look at that of canis familiaris i keep it underlined this is the scientific name of a dog genus canis it also has to be underlined this includes animals like dogs wolves coyotes but not foxes then you come to the family canidae animals uh, in this family include dogs wolves coyotes and foxes as well as cats uh not cats uh, as well as uh, foxes they belong to the family canidae then you have the order carnivora dogs in this order uh um, are because they eat meat as their main food source so cats are also in this group then mammals dogs are in this class because they milk uh, they make milk for their young have ears and have hair over their body phylum chordata because they have got a spinal cord or notochord at least when they were an embryo then kingdom animalia they are animals not plants or bacteria now let us go to the definition of what systematics is and what taxonomy is so we understood what is classification classification means it is the uh, science of the uh, grouping organisms together on the basis of similarities and on the basis of similarities putting them in different groups so that is uh, classification and classification you know you are uh, you classify in the system of seven ranks that is uh, animal of uh, kingdom phylum class order uh, family genus species now we are coming to the new part what is systematics or systematic biology and what is taxonomy so what is systematics first systematics is that the field of study which provides scientific name for a organism that is je kono ekta jontu ki jontu ke ba je kono ekta je jeev ke tara ekta tumi ekta scientific naam dicho you are giving a scientific name it describes them take describe kora hocche it preserves collections of them you keep them in a museum and make a collection even in our bv college zoology Uh, department you'll find museum you have lots of specimens stored in formalin it provides classifications for the organism keys for their identification and data on their distribution so these four factors they are these four factors together they make up the branch known as taxonomy and when we talk about systematics you have another two more points which you study they investigate their evolutionary history you investigate the evolution what was in your ancestors what was before you what was before before you and uh, what came what was 1000 years back so you and what is their relationship uh, how how these uh, different organisms are related to one another this is another part this is not in taxonomy this is studied in systematics and systematic also considers their environmental adaptations that is whether they live on the tree whether they live under water they live on the grass whether whatever the so systematics they study this particular aspect so this is uh, taxonomy is that part of systematics concerned with topics a to d above so a to d are pro taxonomy it provides scientific names for organism it describes them it preserves collections of them it provides classifications for the organisms key for their identifications and data on their distributions and when you talk about systematics you talk about these four as well as you talk about you investigate their evolutionary histories and consider their environmental adaptations so uh, whenever they ask you what is the difference between systematics and taxonomy this is the answer which you have to give so evolutionary histories are studied by uh, uh, methods known as uh, uh, diagram known as cladogram so what are cladograms 
Cladograms are diagrams that show evolutionary relationship among a group of organism. For example, there are, I am talking about, I am naming certain groups of organisms known as one is shark, one is ray finned fish, one is amphibians, you come to primates, come to rodents, come to rabbits, come to crocodiles, come to dinosaurs, come to birds. Now, what is the relationship between all of these organisms? How do you find the relationship between all of these organisms? First, you look at all these organisms and you see that they have all have a vertebra. Merudondo achetadir. So, all of them, the sharks and all of them have got vertebra. So, where this character vertebra is the most primitive character of them all. So, it is absolutely drawn on the bottom. Next, you come, all of them have bony skeleton or cartilage, whether they have bony skeleton or cartilaginous skeleton. This is a taxonomic character which you have to study, whether they have bony skeleton or not. So, sharks don't have a bony skeleton. So, they are further, the, they are further away from uh, all the others. So, shark has got a separate line. It is further away. So, it bifurcates. Next, we come whether they have four limbs or not. Ray finned fish doesn't have four limbs. So, ray finned fishes, they separate away over here. And these are more close to each other. Actually, if in initially it was present randomly. I will explain later in my later classes how to uh, make a, such a tree. But... This is how you read a tree first of all. Then uh, first you need to learn how to read and understand a tree. Then you learn how to make a tree. So then we go to four limbs. Fishes don't have four limbs. So they are separate. Amphibians have got and all they have four limbs. Then we go to amniotic eggs. Amniotic egg means that they have... They are, they are terrestrial eggs, a special type of, they have got amnion. Amphibians don't have amniotic eggs, so they are separated out. Then we go to presence of hair on the body. Rodents and rabbits come. They are primates and uh, rodents and rabbits, they are closer to each other. Then in your temple, Mathar Kopal, rock, you have two post-orbital fenestra. We don't have, they have, so... Crocodiles and birds are more close to each other. So this is how you uh, say which organism is more close to each other in terms of characteristics. This you can understand only when you draw a cladogram. Later on you will learn how to draw a cladogram. The next part which we go to is the other taxonomic characters. What are taxonomic characters? Taxonomic characters, they are also known as taxonomic data in some books. They are the taxonomic attributes that can be used to provide evidence from which relationships between taxa are inferred. So, what are the, these are characters basically on the basis of which uh, this classification is done. The classification can be uh, given as morphological according to Ernst Meyer, physiological, ecological, ethological, geographical as well as monocular biological also. So these are the different types of characteristic features which you can get. Morphology means uh, general external morphology, special structures like genitalia, internal morphology like anatomy, embryology, development. So one organism can be different from another organism if you look at the, how they are developing from the egg. So if in closed species you see one stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4, stage 5 and then the adult comes. In another organism also you have stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4, stage 5. But maybe you see stage 2 of the first organism and stage uh, 2 of the uh, other organism they don't, they are not the same. So they are, they cannot be classified together. They are classified into other groups. Even in, if you look into one population of among human beings, different attributes. These are uh, like uh, some people have got uh, uh, blue eyes, some have got brown eyes. But 
these are not uh, on the these are not taxonomic characters on the basis of which you can put them into separate groups but because uh, it's there are differences in the population so these are not taxonomic attributes or taxonomic characters keep in mind this thing female and male they are different but they are not separate they belong to the same species they are in one group uh, of a particular organism keep this in mind also so you have physiological uh, characters like metabolic factors body secretion genic sterility factors so uh, then later addition was molecular characteristics uh, you have immunological distance electrophoric uh, phoretic difference amino acid sequences of proteins dna hybridization dna and rna sequences and all i will pass a material of the from the real book of mayer and ashlock i will upload it in the google classroom you can have a look and on on mayer's uh, uh, classification of uh, mayer's taxonomic characters i will name them as taxonomic characters you can have read through this read that also then you have behavioral characters or ethological characters you have ecological characters like habitat and host food seasonal variation parasites host reactions you can read them in details in the uh, pdf which i will upload soon today just immediately in the night if i get time i will upload it in the google classroom then you also have geographical characters you have uh, populations differentiated uh, because they are geographically separated because you are geographically isolated so they form become different subspecies like uh, in the video you saw the example of jaguars panthera onca onca panthera onca neo you had different subspecies being formed because uh, one is in africa one is in uh, say asia they can't meet with each other so they are isolated gradually as time passes they become different organisms the next thing uh, which we will talk is about taxonomic types there are three levels of taxonomy alpha taxonomy it is the level describing and naming of species visible things which are visible then you have beta taxonomy it is the level arranging species into a system of higher classification like genus kingdom domain in beta uh, uh, first uh, you uh, you, uh, you, uh, you describe that animal okay and name the species according to certain characteristics canis familiaris okay so this is the dog you has got a teeth it's got a tail it's got these per particular characteristics of a dog therefore okay this is a dog it's canis familiaris then you organize it under family canidae order carnivora the class mammalia so on and so forth you go that is studied in beta taxonomy in omega taxonomy it is the level which takes into consideration of phylogenetic and molecular characteristics so apart from this you have cytotoxin uh, taxonomy and karyotoxonomy where chromosomes are studied uh, for example uh, there is a chromosome uh, say two there is a species of drosophila known as drosophila melanogaster the common fruit fly and a similar common fruit fly is, uh, is drosophila simulans they look Ex exactly the same but they are different species because when you have a look at their polytin chromosomes then you see that uh, the polytin chromosomes are large chromosomes present in the salivary gland of the larva so uh, if you see the pattern in these chromosomes uh, after staining they are different but basically they look the same so they are not the same species they are different species then uh, of course like you said behavioral differences are also there what are the behavioral differences courtship pattern in drosophila simulans and drosophila melanogaster this thing is very uh, ideal when drosophila melanogaster male wants to mate with the female it has got a specific dance pattern it dances in front of the female with a specific rhythm and beat the female understands that this male wants to mate with me and because of the, the understanding this dancing pattern the female mates with the male but if suppose a drosophila simulans male comes in front of a drosophila melanogaster female the uh, simulans has got a different dance pattern so the melanogaster female will not understand oh this male wants to mate with me the female will not understand because it's so this is a different species although they look absolutely the same on the basis of this characteristics they uh, they can be separated away so uh, i i would uh, end my class over here the uh, next week i will again take the next class 
so I will uh, stop my uh, sharing over here and let's get back to the class anybody has got any questions let's see what are the questions sir screen not visible yeah it was not visible for some time uh, is it visible now okay let's see let's ask somebody uh, says uh, Shreya Shreyash uh, was the yes, screen sir. visible is it yes, visible? Yes, sir. It, 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 it is, is visible, visible right now okay let's yes. ask Purvasha Purvasha Dakaja Che Dakaja Chilo yes sir uh, okay fine fine so uh, those who have missed the screen or missed because of network connection video recording will be sent immediately and I will also send you the YouTube link you can follow this as many times slow fast as much as you want you can uh, you can do it as much as you want you can uh, uh, run it as fast like a, a Ferrari or you can run it as slow as a Bullock cart uh, it depends upon you how you want to uh, how slow you want to listen or how fast you want to listen on YouTube pause listen again rewind pause rewind if you are unable to understand one thing you can do all these things then some parts you uh, understood very well oh my god I have to listen to this again then fast forward skip go ahead to the place where you want to understand maybe you have forgotten something okay then you go to this video to that particular part and then you listen to this part you can listen to it as many times as possible before the exams you are, you are, uh, you are feeling tense and you don't want to study put on this lecture and uh, uh, listen to this and go to sleep and next morning do a wonderful exam and come back so all these things you can do uh, and uh, really uh, I feel that online teaching has got its uh, drawbacks like I, I cannot see your faces uh, but it has got its positive uh, parts also all these wonderful videos I can show all these uh, recordings I can give the so pluses and minuses are there but keep in mind online teaching is there to stay it's like the microwave nowadays many people are in most of the houses you have got a microwave to warm food but it was not there but when people started to find the benefits of a microwave it came into uh, the household it became a household item in former times people used to cook their food in coal nowadays what you have a uh, gas gas it's much easier to cook food over there so you are getting the benefits so the moment you start getting the benefits of online education or ICT technology immediately the old classical method of chalk and board hey tomra likhe nao ami dictate kochi all those days are gone so uh, now now you people must have try to get a computer in your home as fast as possible if you are in a very bad financial problem then okay go with your mobile phone but eventually uh, if you have to stay in this world if you have to survive in this world you need a computer and that to latest computers you don't have to spend millions and thousands and thousands of it uh, you can get a computer 10 15 thousand uh, you can get a computer but you can even uh, use your mobile phone as a good quality smartphone where you can follow your classes if to follow classes it's fine but to do other things in on mobile it is difficult but you have to uh, nowadays days of printed note has gone now you have to study uh, through digital medium on from your mobiles best thing the I, you get your e-materials you write it down in your notebook the so while you're writing your uh, you finish your studies also so uh, you uh, you have these advantages perhaps you will learn much better unfortunately what happened in the last uh, five or six years I've seen that students they get lots of marks but they don't know anything they just uh, get I, I, I give them those printed notes they blah 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 they they, uh, they learn it by heart they vomit it in the exam and the next day they forgot forget everything and then if anybody asks what did you learn in zoology sir I don't know anything they are unable to answer any questions so the, this is not learning and because of uh, uh, this learning uh, this, uh, such poor learning and poor quality students today a covid vaccine is not being able to come out because there is a lack of talent and proper people are not getting jobs so this is uh, an another aspect of it but let us not discuss those things so if people have any other questions on this today's topic uh, do uh, ask me to type type or there is a option called raise hand if you raise your hand I will be able to see who has got questions Karul, question ache? Shreyash, question ache? No, sir, no, sir. Thik ache. 
আচ্ছা প্রীতদীপ হাত তুলছে না কি হলো কেসটা ওর যা ওকে জিজ্ঞেস করি এই তোমার কোয়েশ্চেন করো কোয়েশ্চেন করো হ্যাঁ কোনো কোয়েশ্চেন নেই যাই হোক ঠিক আছে ভিডিও শুনে কোয়েশ্চেন পরে থাকলে আমাকে করে দিও কোনো অসুবিধা নেই ঠিক আছে টাটা বাই বাই টাটা বাই বাই ওকে ওকে